Hello, Dr. Damman. You are a professor at the University of Washington and the Chief Medical and Science Officer at Supergut. So welcome to Modern Healthspan, and thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thanks, Richard. It's a pleasure to join you. Appreciate it. So, uh, Dr. Damman, could you give us some background about yourself and, and some of the work and how you got interested in uh, kind of the gut? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, uh, professionally, I'm a gastroenterologist, and um, I, I wear many hats, clinical and, and research, and uh, in the uh, academic arena, but also in the private sector. And um, I am inspired by the possibility of food as medicine, um, simply put. And that all started back in medical school when I turned on to this idea of these microbes uh, in our gut that may be helping us, not the pathogens uh, that we conventionally think of microbes as being, but the commensals, the ones that are um, maybe making factors that are good for us. And that's been a thread that I've followed throughout uh, my whole career uh, through uh, to the Gates Foundation uh, and then ultimately uh, on up to uh, Supergut. And um, I think there's a lot of untapped potential there. Actually, Hippocrates uh, back in antiquity said <laughs> that food be like medicine, medicine be like food, and the gut is the, the root of disease. I think it's the root of health as well. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of therapeutic uh, potential uh, and preventive potential uh, that we can tap into. What I hear is that there's not much uh, food, uh, nutrition in like medical school. Uh, would that be true? Uh, I, I can probably count the number of uh, days that I had lectures in nutrition uh, on maybe my 10 fingers um, <laughs> <laughs> out, of, out of the entirety of medical school. It's, it's really phenomenal. Um, and uh, one would think that within uh, gastroenterology in particular, uh, there would be a lot more training uh, mm -hmm. on, on food, uh, but it's, it's still really limited. Um, I think, I think medicine, uh, is coming around to the idea and, and starting to embrace. And I think it's actually, uh, perhaps the microbiome as a lens, because we have tools now to actually understand and characterize it, that is opening our eyes uh, to this possibility through a whole new light. So could we have a little introduction as to what is resistant starch and what makes it so special? Sure, sure. Absolutely. Resistant starch is a type of fiber. Uh, that's present in plant poops. Uh, and it, it gets its, its moniker from the fact that it's resistant to digestion uh, by our own enzymes. Uh, so the amylase that our pancreas makes, uh, it's, it's resistant. And it more or less is an intact as it makes its way on down to the lower intestine. So this, the lower small intestine and the, and the colon um, in large part, where then uh, our partners in health, uh, the microbes in our microbiome actually have a feast on it and um, make uh, factors like short chain fatty acids and butyrate and um, amino acids and neurotransmitters and B vitamins and all these wonderful things um, that some of which we actually can't get in our diet. Um, now, you know, back to resistant starch and where it's coming from, there's different types. There's um, the type that's uh, kind of naturally present in some foods like green bananas and legumes. Um, there's uh, also a type that you get when you kind of heat something and then cool it and it, that uh, starch gels uh, and becomes resistant. Um, and there's, there's other types uh, yet, but all these types um, are just not that prevalent in our modern diets for, for many reasons. Actually, a very basic question. So we, we hear we should have fiber, right? And we have mm -hmm. soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. So where does resistant starch fit within that kind of area? Yeah, so um, it's, it's an interesting uh, paradigm and way of characterizing fiber. And it, it, it um, may not be getting at what's most important about fiber. And so the direct answer to your question is resistance starch straddles the space between the two. It's both. Um, but um, what's perhaps more relevant to health than whether something is soluble or insoluble is whether it serves as a prebiotic to the microbes in our gut. 
Um, certainly that's not everything about fiber, but that's a really important role that fiber is playing in our diet. And um, it turns out that both soluble and insoluble fibers can be prebiotics. Uh, so um, short answer is it's both. And the, the long answer is it gets complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Could we could we dive into a little bit more detail on the fermentation of so fermentation is uh, breakdown with without oxygen correct that that's what it means right and then I will go into that a little bit and then the uh, outcome of what are the some of the, the good things that resistant starch creates or fiber creates in general uh, with the with the microbes. Yes, uh, so your definition is is correct. Uh, that's anaerobic uh, fermentation. There's there different types of fermentation, but uh, that is primarily what's happening, uh, especially in the lower gut. In the upper gut, there might be some microaerophilic organisms that um, are, are using some um, oxygen. Um, and in terms of what uh, fiber at large, resistant starch in particular, uh, are being turned into, um, I kind of rattled off uh, some of the things really quickly at the beginning, and, and that's all true. Um, so amino acids, the building blocks of proteins, um, and neurotransmitter precursors, um, B vitamins, and uh, um, short chain fatty acids like butyrate are some of the key factors uh, or metabolites that are being made uh, by the microbiome. And, in fact, one could think about uh, the colon and the microbes, they're almost like a mini factory in our gut um, that in some ways provide us with nutrients, maybe even during times of stress when we might not um, say evolutionarily or historically have had access to um, higher uh, nutritional quality, who would say like animal source foods. Um, it, it's, it's very uh, likely and the data suggests that these microbes were making uh, some of those things for us, like amino acids, which I find just fascinating. Uh, but the, the one molecule I'm uh, most fascinated by is butyrate. And uh, butyrate is a short chain fatty acid. And there are a, a number of very recent studies coming out linking butyrate, um, just as the microbiome has been linked. So this isn't cause, this is correlative uh, to a number of conditions. Um, so things like um, neurocognitive disorders like sleep disorders um, or autoimmune disorders and metabolic disorders. And it may very well be that um, butyrate among the other short chain fatty acids are kind of the key, one of the key mediators of how the microbiome is impacting our health at large. Um, and there's a lot more to unpack there, uh, but uh, maybe I'll, I'll pause for a minute. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I would be interested in, in getting into a bit more detail on butyrate and particularly, I mean, is there any other way uh, that we can get butyrate or is, is it only through the fermentation of fiber? Yeah, uh, it's an excellent question. And uh, butyrate is present in small amounts uh, in our diet uh, and, and doesn't come just from the colonic bioreactor in our microbiome, but those amounts are quite small. Uh, some of the sources, um, there's actually a conjugated butyrate to glycerol backbone called tributyrin uh, that's present in butter. Um, and then uh, the fermented foods that we eat, uh, often the ones that kind of have off flavors or smells, uh, <laughs> are, 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 the, are the ones that uh, contain butyrate. And so, um, you know, coffee, for example, uh, there are uh, quality control processes that uh, look for butyrate and try to um, maybe decrease it. Although some of the more artisanal uh, uh, coffee uh, suppliers may actually uh, embrace and enjoy those those smells and flavors. And the same is true for for chocolate uh, and stinky cheeses. And I could probably name many other fermented foods that that have butyrate in them. <laughs> okay, excellent. Uh, it sounds like nat natto may have some but butyrate in it. Very possible. Uh, <laughs>